five minutes to understand plug flow reactors. Chemists at a research centre have made a new molecule in the lab using a conical flask equipped with a magnetic stirrer. They now want to produce this molecule at industrial scale using a continuous mixed flow reactor. That is, a reactor which is fed continuously with a mixture of raw materials and with the continuous removal of the reaction products. Unfortunately, some molecules of the raw material have a very short residence time inside the reactor. Others spend a slightly longer time in the reactor before exiting, and yet others have an extremely long residence time. In fact, in a continuous stirred tank reactor, or CSTR, the number of possible residence times is infinite. To illustrate this, one can draw a graph with the different possible residence times in the CSDR along the x-axis and their probability to occur on the y-axis. In other words, this graph shows the number of molecules exiting the reactor at each of the different times. It can be seen that there is a large number of molecules with a short residence time, a few number of molecules with a very long residence time, and many molecules with residence times in between both extremes. The resulting curve has the shape of a decreasing exponential function. Let's return to the industrial scale stirred tank reactor. Another problem is that the concentration of the reactant is uniform throughout the reactor, since the reactor is stirred continuously. And this concentration is low because it corresponds to the concentration at the outlet of the reactor. However, the reaction rate is usually proportional to the reactant concentration. Hence, in a stirred tank reactor, the reaction rate is low throughout the entire volume of the reactor, and this results in a low production of the molecule of interest. In order to overcome this, we can design a reactor without a stirrer so that zones with different degrees of concentration exist. The reactant concentration will remain low close to the reactor outlet, but it will increase as you move towards the reactor inlet, and therefore the reaction rate will also increase towards the inlet. In addition, if the length of the reactor is increased, the residence time of the reactive molecules will also increase, giving them time to be transformed into the desired molecule. This was how the tubular reactor was invented. The corresponding ideal reactor is generally called a plug flow reactor. So, what is the explanation? In a tubular reactor, all the molecules move through it at roughly the same speed. You can imagine a piston that moves forward inside the reactor at a constant speed pushing the fluid. The molecules that are located in a small section of this reactor are hardly mixed with the molecules just behind them or just in front of them. This type of behaviour does not actually exist in reality, but we can get quite close to it. The plug flow reactor is an ideal reactor, which is used as a guideline for the design of industrial tubular reactors. Let's imagine the injection of a non-reactive tracer at the inlet of the reactor in the form of a pulse input, which means that the amount of tracer is injected instantaneously. If a probe is placed at the outlet of the reactor, we will be able to follow tracer concentration at the outlet as a function of time. If the reactor is a perfect plug flow reactor, the exit signal will have this shape. We can see the pulse input corresponding to the injection of the tracer, which is just shifted in time. All of the molecules have the same residence time, which is the time measured between the injection of the tracer and the peak observed at the exit. We can understand intuitively that this time also corresponds to the ratio between the reactor volume and the volumetric flow rate. This is also called the space time. In a CSDR, on the other hand, the residence time distribution decreases exponentially with time. A large amount of tracer exits the reactor after a short time, after which less and less tracer is detected at the outlet. However, this wide distribution of residence times in the CSDR has an adverse effect on the production of the desired molecule. In fact, it is preferable to use a reactor in which the residence time distribution is narrow, that is, where all the molecules exit the reactor at the same time, 
like in the plug flow reactor. Sometimes a plug flow reactor cannot be used in industry due to technical constraints. In this case, similar conditions can be achieved by connecting several CSTRs in series so that the exit stream of one reactor is the feed stream of the next reactor. In reality, in a tubular reactor, there is a deviation from ideal plug flow, which manifests itself as axial dispersion. When the tracer pulse input is injected at the inlet of the reactor, the tracer has the tendency to spread over the length of the tube. This can be seen in the following movie. The pink coloured tracer spreads over a small zone in the packed tubular reactor. As the tracer moves through the reactor, it spreads out more and more. When the tracer approaches the reactor outlet, we can monitor its concentration using, for example, a conductor meter. It can be seen that the tracer concentration increases rapidly at first, but not instantaneously like in an ideal reactor. The concentration then decreases more or less slowly, depending on how much axial dispersion there is in the reactor. This decrease in concentration is not at all instantaneous as it would be in an ideal plug flow reactor. However, it is faster than that observed in a perfectly mixed CSTR. The operation of this type of non-ideal tubular reactor can be represented with the axial dispersion model. For other types of industrial reactors, a model associating perfectly mixed CSTRs and plug flow reactors can be used to represent the hydrodynamics in the real reactor. Combinations of tubular reactors and CSDRs offer many potentially interesting possibilities for industrial production.